Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It is the 17th of March, Asia time. And uh, today, top of the agenda is a Gitter tutorial for me by Chris. And then we've got several other topics that we may, may spend time with and may not. But that's the first one. Chris, are there any other topics you wanted to put on the agenda today? Um, how about JSON? Okay, Google Summer of Code. Good. All right. Anything else? All right, then let's take on Gitter Tutorial. So this is me requesting help because I'm struggling to find myself in the new matrix-based user interface of Gitter. So here's, oh, and now everything's caught up. This does oh. not help me at all. Okay. <laughs> I, the, um, go you ahead. You have to click on, because like, I, I, but uh, for now, it's like, I don't see any mention of you like, elsewhere, because if you click on, if you go uh, go to the right-hand side, top right-hand side, and you see okay. a dialog box, uh, not this one, the next, next one. Next. Next one, this one, the threads? Oh. Yeah. Okay. If 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 for that channel, if there's a thread, it will pop up there. But for the alarms, you can just go to the alarm one, the the, the alarm, the bell. The bell. Okay, so the notifications. Yeah. All right. Oh, so you, you, should, you should be able to find all the notifications. Okay, and what I was seeing is that over here on the left, yeah. in the in this panel that shows the rooms, the various places I could go, the the conversations I could be in. Um, I would see indications that there was a message or there would be a number on the right hand side here near the, the notification options bell. And yeah. that number would never go away, no matter what I did, trying to navigate around in that. Um, um, the th yeah, the thing is, I think they have a bug because sometimes you have like you have read the message in the thread, but mm -hmm. it still shows up. But um, once you have a new message in, on the same thread, it will go away. Ah, uh, okay. So it's not your problem. They have a bug. Okay, so I don't need to be. I don't need to be, need to be gravely concerned if if a number three appears on GSOC SIG, or in my case, it was a number twenty five appears on the GSOC SIG, and as far as I can tell, I've looked at everything. Therefore, oh. the fact that that number continues to exist is not a problem. Well, um, the thing is, if you have 25 of them, it's probably not a bug because oh, if you go through thread, the word thread to laugh of it, that's a, like a back button, uh, the thread. The th Did you see the word on the right hand side? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One. The thread right here. Uh-huh. There's a button on the left hand side. Okay. This one? Yeah. Click on that. I can see okay. like if, if, if like, if you haven't read a message, for the thread, that should be a dot on the right hand side to a timestamp. There should be a dot on the right. Okay, so so but, if I haven't read a thread, so if I were to mark this thread as unread, let's see. Oh, there isn't a way to do that. No. Okay, so if there if there were a thread that I had not yet read, it would appear here. There will be an indicator on the right hand side, like it would be roughly at this uh, location. To, to, uh, yeah 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 about that okay so it would like for for if for the when it's synced that should be a dot a gray dot or um for for me it's time for me it's in dark mode but for you it's like uh, that should be dot to the right hand side of the name of the person who probably started this right okay all right, so yeah, there so will be a, a visual indicator on this line. Whoops, on this line, yep. a vis there will be a visual indicator that tells me, oh, okay, I haven't read this one yet. Yep, the new messages, it's fine. Yeah, and you haven't read it yet. Okay, and now, now this arrow that I'm hovered over that has the word threads, yeah. what's the meaning there? Okay, so this is what? some... Oh, sorry. It's like I, I confused the two. It's like because I thought you were on like threads and not thread. So if you go to threads, like here, so the, the, the dot should be to right hand side of the timestamp. 
Okay, the dot should be the right-hand side of the timestamp. So they would be here. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so if I've not, not read it, it will have an indicator there. So if I, let's see, if I, and people now, my, my list of people is significantly smaller than it was before. Interesting. So if I start a new chat with... Just like... Oh, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead, because I was like, I was like, because if you click on the home button on the left, because you see uh, to uh, if you go to the left hand side, yeah, click on that. Ah, okay. Now I I see. Okay, so that that's something I was okay. on the people. Right. So here, if I were trying to talk with Vlad, I would click here, and then I can see. Okay, here's this, and it says no, you can't do it. Vlad and I haven't talked in a long time, so that's no shock. But if I were to click this plus and instead say, I want to talk with Chris Stern. Yeah. Yep, I'm there. Uh huh. Go. Okay. And this is the beginning of a conversation. Yeah. Okay. Start chatting. And now if I navigate away from that and go back to another room, eventually I will probably get a some indicator that there's a message for me from you. You uh, you should be able to see it now. If you go back to people. Okay, go back to people. Um, back to people. Do you see do you see me? So because you have to show 48 more. Okay. You uh, there that. you are. Yeah, if you click on that. Okay, I but I, I I'll try again. So go go back out. Okay. Not, so so I'll, um going out, going back to the Jenkins project. Okay. Oh, and here's a people in the Jenkins project. Interesting. Okay, and so it the concept of home here. Yeah. You're there, but okay. But I made the mistake. I was in a different place. I was in the ready to see it. Okay, could you type one more message just to help me see if? Ah, there it is. Okay, there's a one yeah. here for you. There's a one up here as well. Yeah, and so, with... if I click any one of those, it should take me there. And okay. the, the one will go away. Great. All right. So that was, I don't know why I was so perplexed because I was clicking on things up here, clicking and or on on rows here and not getting anything to clear the 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 indicator that the message was had been read. Okay, good. I have a question. I just yes. noticed I don't see that messages have timestamps. Uh, actually, I think they do. I think if we look here, or there was the timestamp view was in the thread. Yeah. So I think so I like, saw yeah. there's a date stamp. And there's a timestamp. Oh, or okay. a, I think I meant the dates, the timestamp, not the date stamp. So I just, I just sent you a message in the doc channel. Please test it in this Okay, thread. and there's and there's the one in the Jenkins and Jenkins docs. Good. Yep. Okay. Can you find me? So oh no. Go. Oh, there it is. Sure. Okay. So the, that no, was not, not, that not, not that one. Go to threads. Oh, go so to threads. Go. Okay. So I gotta go to threads. Uh click on the the, the, the button, yeah, the back button. Okay. See me. Yeah, the right hand side. I see that one. Ah, right. okay. So, All right. So, so finding that that was that was a crucial thing. I suspect I need to to learn to navigate threads more effectively. So I enable the threads, and then by showing all threads, or if I just show threads I've participated in, that would have shown it to me. So, yeah. yes. And now if I navigate away, so let's say I go to the GitLab plugin to look at it for a little bit, then if you send a message in the docs channel, 
or in the doc's room, I will see a notification there. And then it, if it's in the thread, I've got to go find that thread. Yeah. Ah, okay. And there's the, so clicking the channel. And this was the active thread. So that's why I got lucky and it showed up there. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Anything else so I should while you're there, Back to the time. Like when I looked at this and I saw Kevin's thing that a meeting starting in 30 minutes. Uh huh. How do I quickly know 30 minutes from when? Ah, good. And I'm not sure there is a way to tell in this view. Let's see. So, oh, Just, wait a sec. Here it is. You see the time okay, stamp there, okay. Meg? Some of them. Now, up above, there's a mark weight that doesn't show a time. So I, it appears oh, I have when to you, hover you have to, over it. You have to um, hover over it. Although I'm not sure that that really tells me what I need because this was was sent, Chris. What probably um, just today? So like oh, a, this was today. So so this was yep. less than 24 hours ago. It says today. Yeah. Today. Okay. So then if I go back, today. now where did you see that it says today? Yes, oh, today. Um, okay. right in the middle. See that little middle, yellow middle. bar across below so, that. Right. You're right inside. Why on earth they made it in such faint lettering, I do not know, but it says today, center. So, uh, oh, 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 got it right there. Okay, yesterday. there's a heading. Okay, yesterday, today. Okay, good. So they've got they've got larger groupings by day. And so if I go back Monday, Saturday, okay, good. So I need to learn to read that. Very good. Okay. All right, so hovering gives me a timestamp, and the the day is hinted here, or it's visible. Where else did I see it? Oh, if I hover over it, no, where was it? If I hover over the time, it gives me a full date. So uh -huh. Wednesday, 15 March, 1220. And that's going to be local time, my local time, right? I I would have I would imagine so because. 12.20 UTC would be very early in the morning, and I'm unlikely to have written that at that hour of the morning for me. Yeah. All right, good. Okay, so date information there, date information available there, person here, and then threads are the, the crucial thing there. Anything else, Chris, that you need to need to highlight for me as the amateur who doesn't use this system well? Mm, I think like um, they have a new feature called like let me check because I, I think you have it too because it's if you go to home button they have like okay room. home home and yeah and if you go to the Jenkins space because like uh, for for like um you see if you um. Let's see. So if you go, if you click on the Jenkins icon, okay. Yeah. So this one, yeah, that one, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You can see like everything in the Jenkins space. So that you have people in rooms, but these are these two, the home button and the Jenkins, they're linked up. So it's like the equivalents. So I I will show up at your home button and also in the Jenkins workspace. I see. Okay. All right. So because you're in your, I, I'm not sure I understand the why of that, but that's great. So, so conversations with you will be visible to me in either place because here under people, there's Chris Stern and in the Jenkins rooms or in, in Jenkins, you're here top of the list for people. So somehow they knew that Yours, your and my yeah. interactions happen in the context of Jenkins. Okay. Yep, that's right. Very good, thank you. Anything else I need to know? Let's see the add button here. Oh, this lets me explore other mm, rooms if I- Don't think so. Okay. All right, then let's call that one yeah, done. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Say again, Chris. Oh, I just said, yep, yep, okay. All right.
Okay, so see the recording for details on the user interface and how to use it well. Good, thank you. All right, next topic then was Google Summer of Code. Yep, so we had a meeting yesterday. I think Sean Ma talked about like the drafting of proposals and gave some hints and tips. And that, um, that was, I feel like that was, was a short meeting. Okay. And well, John, John Mark had told me that we're going to have a... Sorry, Chris, you're breaking up. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So there were risks from the contributors asking for reviews. Um, at least that's what I, or there were requests from contributors asking for reviews of their proposals. Yeah. And uh, there's a sheet that John Mark has a has a sheet that tracks reviews, right? That's right. Okay, good. So uh, Mark has several to review. Um, others likewise. And for me, I doubt that I will not likely to review them tomorrow because I have a number of things I have to do for work review until the weekend okay until saturday or sunday so is the is the 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 workload uh in the in the chat channels okay for you chris i think so yeah okay it's not not overwhelming you with too many questions, too much load. Not really, no. Not not currently. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for what you're doing there. That's wonderful. You're welcome. So I've seen um, several pull requests. Several. That's not not the wrong, right way to say it. Many pull requests. from from candidates and um, good results some of them were exceptionally brave we've talked about one here in, in or some in in doc's office hours that bandit singh um, submitted some significant documentation work and and it's still in review because the the place that it was changing is dramatic enough it's the upgrade guide and that thing is there's there's enough complexity in it that it's got to have a long and detailed review by people who've done lots of upgrades so mark's okay. review is the big is pending and others have submitted likewise uh, good docs uh, tests for plugins etc it's really positive. Anything else on Google Summer of Code, Chris? I think we have to, I think we should mention that the, the application is going to open in three days on the 20th. Oh, oh, right. Yes, very good. So so let's talk timeline. Oh, maybe. Very oh, good. No, not three, four days. Okay, so uh, applications are may may be submitted Start. to Google yeah beginning uh and March, let's get it March, March 20th, I think Monday 20 March 2023 uh application period closes uh for April is that right yeah that's right thus they really want uh, correctly so right they want feedback on their on their draft proposals now before that opening that way they're not waiting till the last minute to submit their proposal okay yeah all right so this weekend is a good time to review proposals yep very good 
And then the next big milestone is it early May, where the project submits the project reviews all final proposals, all final project plans, uh, prepares their response to Google, where the response is, how many projects are we proposing? Are we rec offering to accept? And how, who are the mentors? And how many per, per project? Any other items we need to insert, we need to carry here, Chris? How many and which projects? Mm. The project reviewers actually mm. say, we think this one is good and this one's good, right? Correct. Yeah, you're right. It's which projects are, it's, it's not just which projects are we offering to accept, right? Right. And we offer to Google and they may, they, we may say, hey, we think we could run four. Here is how we would staff them, et cetera. Google may come back and say, we'll give you two. Okay. But we could, and we could say we can staff four, but we think these eight are worthy or whatever, right? That, that I'm not sure because or I if think we're, if we're Google gonna give only four, cares we're, about which things we'll staff, right? If, yeah. if, if, they, if there's a useful project, but it doesn't have a mentor or it doesn't have a good proposal, it doesn't matter, right? They, yeah. they absolutely want something that, that has mentors assigned and that, that, that the open source project is ready to, to support. Yeah. Anything else, Chris? Mm, maybe not for now. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Other topics I had are relatively brief. It was, we thanks on the LTS, it's done. The change log is. Actually, that we can delete. So the LTS was for 375.4, 387.1, and 3.94 security updates, security vulnerabilities fixed. Anything else on those LTS releases? Okay, so next piece is we're planning to transition the install documentation and the general use documentation from Java to Java 11 to, oops, from Java 11 to Java 17. The idea is that we are really approaching the time when we would prefer users install with Java 17. 11 is still supported, but there's no reason not to um, use Java 17 now. And so the idea is that since Debian 12 will drop Java 11 completely and is expected to release sometime in the April, May timeframe, we'll use that as our justification to switch to documenting Java 17. And you said Java 11 will continue to be supported, not past when Debian drops support for it, right? Oh, no, even past that, because oh, okay. the Debian project ending support for it just means that Debian doesn't want to, Debian, Debian releases have a very long life cycle, right? Three okay. to five years. And Java 11 won't be supported by Oracle beyond like 20, 20, late 2024. And Debian says, hey, that's, that's not, I think their, their logic is that's, that's not a long enough life cycle for us to have 11 in Debian 12. The other vendors like Eclipse Tamarin will continue to support Debian and including Debian 12 running Java 11. Okay. So it's it's not, this doesn't prevent, wouldn't prevent us from continuing to do it. We just didn't want the hassle of describing 
if you're running Debian 12, you need to use Java 17. We'd rather just say, everybody use Java 17 and let them then decode, oh, I need Java 11, fine, use Java 11 instead. So there was a surprise that we had. Uh, Basil Crow has recently fixed a bug in the job DSL plugin that was Java 17 specific. Huh? And, and so there, there are still a few of, or that was the most recent, and that's the only one I'm aware of, and it's now fixed. Excellent. So, but just, just be aware that this change is coming. Uh, this, we will need eventually an, a plan for when we transition off Java 11 completely, but Java 11 continues supported by the upstream, by the Java providers until at least late 2024. So we've got a, a long life ahead of it. Any questions there on the Java 17 transition? Okay, so the rest of these, I'm not sure that there's anything for me to say that, that the two of you would be interested in because we've got an idea of how to tell people that we're ending support for something. And we're going to propose that idea as a Jenkins enhancement proposal, and then you let the community help figure out what's the best way to do this thing. Okay. The examples are uh, Ubuntu 18 is end of life in April. CentOS 7 is end of life in June of 2024. Alpine Linux 3.14 is end of life in like May of 2023. So each of these things are not Jenkins, but it would be good for Jenkins to tell the administrator of the Jenkins system that they're running on a thing that will be deprecated and unsupported as of such and such a date, or if that date is passed, that they are now running on an unsupported thing. Right. Okay. And that that covered all the topics that I had. The same thing is for CentOS 7 with one additional twist. The additional twist with CentOS 7 is I intend, I will propose that we end the support of CentOS 7 even before the operating system provider ends it. So they will stop supporting it in June of 2024, but I'm tired of it. And I'm, I'm going to propose that we end maintenance of it earlier than that. Think September, October, maybe, maybe as late as December of this year. Okay. Those are all the topics that I had. Any other topics that we need to discuss today? Oh yeah, I do have a question though. It's like for for the EU US time zone meeting. Can uh -huh. you talk about votes? So what's the outcome of that? Because like people are asking like if if we should add. Uh, a link to the Twitter, but I think the decision was no. But then someone uh had had some more than one person. Um, they asked like whether we could put it somewhere else at least more visible than currently. So so tell me tell me your your question was where is the Zoom link for the no, meeting? No books books. For the books, like we have a books page, right? We're oh, just... oh, okay. All right. So, oh, I see. I, I see. Okay, got it. So, so Meg, let me show you what's what Chris is asking about. So, on Jenkins.io page, we're familiar with, and the about I... lets us navigate to various topics and things. One of the things it doesn't have, though. So we've got the roadmap. We've got the download page, the awards page, et cetera. What we don't have though, is a link to this page, the books page. Oh. And thanks to Chris actually, that this books page exists, uh, but it's, it's not linked into the navigation structure at all yet. Oh. And so the question then was, where should, I think, Chris, your question was, where should it be linked into the structure, into the navigation? Yeah. yeah. 
and and I'm not sure, but I did see an example from Kevin. Kevin Martin showed an example today from the OpenStack website where they had a link to books. I wanted to see if we see it in their navigation pages. So learn. Whoops. Oh, that didn't help. Back. Learn. I don't see books there. Marketplace, maybe in Marketplace. Oh, yes. Here's where he found it. Okay. So it was somehow in this OpenStack Marketplace. And then there was a, maybe it was under training? No. How did he find it? Okay, just a minute. Keep, keep looking. Community news, marketing resources, maybe? No. No. Marketplace. Docs. Huh. Okay. I do not know. I know during office hours, he showed us this. Okay. And it was on a page like this where what they had was they had maybe infra solutions and nope they had in this kind of a layout so it was inside the openstack marketplace they had a page that showed a book image here and a brief description of the book here and then a, a get button here that i clicked on the get button and it took me to a vendor that would be willing to sell me the book oh and and so, but now the problem is this hasn't told me how he got there. Oh, go to search, search. Oh, oh, search. search. Good idea. Okay, so maybe we look for books. OpenStack technical publications. Ah, yes, there it is. Ah. Okay, so this is the page he showed us. Apparently, it's not hooked into the navigation tree because I don't, I don't see how we get there except by doing search. But he thought, hey, this is the same kind of thing that we're using. Okay, our, our layout is a little different, but it's a similar concept, right? Where we've got Mastering Jenkins, this jumps to the, a vendor that will sell it to you. And here's the, the cover and here's a summary with some data about it. And but no place to click and buy it. Well, well, no, it's not so much because I can certainly I can I can click here and it will take me to it. And let me buy it from the vendor from Amazon. Okay, that's going to go to Amazon. Right, and this one because it's from Pact, I think will go. Oh, it goes to Amazon as well. Okay, the 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 OpenStack books when they come from Pact Publishing, they actually jump to the Pact site like this. Ah. So, and, and I'm not sure okay. if the, the sellers of the books would prefer we went there if they're to the publisher site or if we, we go to a seller's site like Amazon or Barnes and Noble or whoever. This one probably goes to Amazon, yeah. So, okay. but now Chris, I thought your question was where do we hook it into the menu, right? And I would say we ought to put it here yeah, in the well, about. Oh, yeah. go ahead. So did you I have- I did a... put it in the about, but it was removed for some reason. Oh, oh, okay. Meaning it was removed by, by Gavin Mogan or- Just like we did. It was. I'm not sure we removed it. Okay, so so I I have a I would guess. So we did have link. Yeah, so let's do it. Jenkins dash io components. Uh, and where is it? Okay. No, maybe I've got the wrong site. I'll have to go looking for it. No, that's not it. So it was Gavin Mogan. These are the web components. Okay, so 
Gavin. Ah, this should take us there because he will have done recent contributions to it. So, plugin site. Oh, come on, show me more. Here it is Jenkins IO components. I suspect what happened is that in the transition from the standard menu to web components, Gavin may have just missed that, but you had put it into the about menu. Is that right, Chris? Yep. Yep. Okay. So then, then now what we need to do is we need to find roadmap. And it is here. Okay, this is the navigation bar and the footer. I didn't remember the footer having much in. Oh, yes. Okay, right. So here we, oh, right. Okay, and it probably does need to be in both, doesn't it? Because under resources, books seems like a good choice to be under resources, wouldn't it? Downloads, blog, documentation, books seems like a good thing there. Yeah, we could do that. Merchandise, so books might be a another thing to go under under the other category. Okay, well, so, so shall we make a proposal here? I'm not sure how to do it. I And I certainly don't know how to test it, but I think it's it's worth us saying, hey, we think it should go in the nav bar. We think it should go in the footer. But I think someone already opened a PR to put it in the footer. But we oh, they did. Oh, okay. So we should be able to see it in, oh, stop filtering. Just a minute. How do I get back to where I was? There, okay. Pull requests, add yeah. books hyperlink. Okay. Yeah. And now it's failing. Okay. Yeah, I think not my fault. It's not in favor of it. Okay. Go down further. Okay, so oh okay so they're saying hey they don't think it should be in the footer okay i'm fine with that too would it be a terrible thing for it to be in the drop down under documentation um let's see how big the drop down is See, I would hesitate to put it there because on a small screen that risks yeah, overrunning, that's... overrunning the vertical. But the about is only five, five long. Yeah. So I, I hesitate to put it under documentation, but but I guess it's it's not unreasonable to consider it. And we could, for instance, decide that we're going to shrink this thing where it has two entries for tutorials now that really they're easily easily navigated by just making it one one line instead of three and right. then maybe we could have a book section that says hey here here are the, here are the user guide solution pages tutorials developer guide contributor guide and books yeah i put it at the very end I'm just saying I could see, you know, you hit documentation because I'm somebody who's willing to read. Right. You right. know, and I'm looking for a general something mm -hmm. that I don't know. Yeah. In fact, maybe documentation is a better choice than the about menu. I was thinking of about just because it's short, but really ah. about's not a, an obvious place to go for a book, whereas documentation seems like a more obvious place. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. It's like we should put it on the docs. Okay, good. 
All right. So let's, it feels like then we ought to weigh in that, hey, the, 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 the question here was, whoops, where did it go? This one. No, IO components. Nope, this one. Okay. Okay, so so we discussed in Doc's office hours Asia and felt that we should add books to the end of the documentation menu. Documentation drop down menu. And that we should save space, save vertical space, vertical, vertical space in the drop down by converging, by removing, by replacing the three rows. Tutorial. What about Guide deleting the sub links to the tutorials? Oh, oh, right. There we go. By so there is a big, there is the, a big tutorials, and we're saying we don't need the two underneath it. Right. The tutorial sub items by removing the tutorial. What would you call it? Sub menus. I will. Yeah. Or sub links or. Yeah. So the the which was guided tour and other tutorials yeah the tutorials page as guided tour as its top page as its top segment as its first segment and then the other tutorials are right below it mm -hmm. are in the next segment. Good. So are you are the two of you okay with me how I phrased it there? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, agreed that it is not significant enough to justify insertion into the uh, footer. Although I think header space is even more valuable than footer, but I understand that, hey, if they don't want it in the footer, no problem. No argument. How about this way? No argument that it not be in the footer. You lift up the knot. Ah, right. There we go. That's a really bad phrase sentence, isn't it? That's terrible. Uh, no problem for us that it is not in the footer. I don't read footers anyway. <laughs> don't tell anyone I said that. Okay. Good enough? Yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Any other topics for today? I confess I'm it's almost 10 p.m. my time. So I'm running out of running out of steam. I was wondering minutes. about this time. I mean, this is going to be for many, because this was an hour earlier for you. Right. You moved it last year for GSOC. Well, but the the problem is if we move it right now, it's 8 30 a.m. or it was at the start of the meeting, it was 8 30 a.m. India Standard Time. Okay. Uh Chris, what time is it for you now? 4 30 a.m. Um, yeah. it's now, now 10 minutes to 12 p.m. Wait a sec. So you, this is actually a not bad time. You're actually awake usually at this time then, huh? <laughs> yes. true, true, true. It's like 11.50 now. Wait a sec. 11.50 p.m. A.m. A.m. Okay, good. So it's, the sun is up. 
it's sort of the middle of your day. Yeah, just before lunch. Okay, yes. all right, good. All right, so I assume this time works okay for you, Chris, then? Yep. All right, I, and it's not not that you're, you, you certainly are not required to attend, but- Yes, he is. <laughs> no, he's not. I miss you, Chris, you must be there. <laughs> Okay, okay. But but I want to be sure that we've got a reasonable time for those who are in India if when Diraj wants to join us or somebody else wants to join. And so so this time works well for them because it's 8:30 a.m. all year round. So it's not terribly early their morning, but it's it's still early enough to be a you could squeeze it in. Okay. And you can do it Mark without dying. But well, we'll see if I if I start dying, I'll end the meeting early or et cetera. We'll yeah. we'll watch. Or even a half hour. I don't know. I don't right. care. I'm on European time. So exactly. I'm totally All right. here. Anything else from either of you? Nope. No, good meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Recording will be available whenever I get it published. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Talk to you next Bye. week. Bye. Bye.